Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's video is going to be very important for those people who study population genetics and also genetics and forensic science, for those who study plant and animal breeding and selection. Today we are going to talk about inbreeding. So here is a problem in a large population that reproduced by random mating the frequencies of the genotypes homozygous dominant, heterozygous and homozygous recessive are 0 0.04, 0 0.32 and 0 0.64 respectively. Assume that the change in the climate induce the population to reproduce exclusively by self-fertilization. Predict the frequencies of the genotypes in this population after many generations of self-fertilization. Take a look. So we have three genotypes. One is homozygous dominant, another is heterozygous, and the last one is homozygous recessive genotype. And we are told that um, these three genotypes are going exclusively to be reproduced by self fertilization. So what does it mean? That means that basically we have to cross with itself. For example, if we cross homozygous dominant with itself, we are always going to get homozygous dominant in the progeny. And take a look. And if we have the frequency of this genotype according to our problem, which is 0 0.04, 100% result of self-fertilization would be a progeny of the same genotype and hence the frequency. As for the homozygous recessive genotype, we can see the same picture. If we cross homozygous recessive genotype with itself, so self-fertilize or self-pollinate if it is plants, we are always going to get in a progeny also 100% the same genotype. And if we start with uh, frequency of this genotype which is 0 0.64, so 0 0.64, 100% of the progeny is going to be the same genotype. Take now a look what is going to happen with heterozygous genotype. And again, we just built simple Punnett square. And this time the picture is going to be as follows. So homozygous dominant genotype, heterozygous genotype here and here, and homozygous recessive genotype here. So as you see, we start with a frequency of this genotype, which is 0 0.2. 32, but in the progeny only half of the progeny going to be of the same genotype. So in next generation we will start with 0 0.16. This is going to be frequency of the heterozygous genotype. As you see quarter which is here quarter of this um, frequency is going to be homozygous dominant. So quarter uh, would be 0 0.8. So we have to add this number here. So plus 0 0.08. And in the F1 generation, the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype is going to be 0 0.12. And uh, as for the another genotype that we can see here is homozygous recessive. Uh, the f uh, also one quarter is going to belong to this genotype. So we have to add this number here. So frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype in F1 generation is going to increase also by 0 0.08. So new frequency in F1 generation is going to be 0 0.72. So just after, uh, so this is going to be parental generation, 
and this is numbers let me circle them with the same color is going to be a new frequency of the genotypes so capital a capital a capital a small a and small a small a in f1 generation now let's take a look what's going to happen in the next f2 generation so this is going to be f2 generation and this time we again see the same picture so we have to uh, self-fertilize homozygous dominant self-fertilize homozygous recessive and self-fertilize heterozygous and again we would see that only 50 percent of the when we uh, self pollinate or self-fertilize heterozygous only 50 percent would be also heterozygous one quarter would be homozygous dominant one quarter would be homozygous recessive so again let's do new calculations so we start with 0 0.12 this is uh, frequency of the f1 generation so this is 0 0.12 plus one quarter which is here uh, of the 0 0.16 one quarter is going to be 0 0.04 so plus 0 0.04 and new frequency of the F2 generation of the homozygous dominant is going to be 0 0.16. Frequency of the heterozygous genotype we had 0 0.16 and it would be just a half in F2 generation. So the loss of the heterozygosity would be 50% with each cycle. So would be 0 0.0. Eight. and frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype would be 0 0.72 plus 0 point quarter uh, of this frequency uh, so would be 0 plus 0 0.04 so the new frequency in F2 generation of the homozygous recessive genotype is going to be 0 0.76. You also have to understand that these numbers meaning 16%, 8% and 76%. I don't think that I need to continue this. You know that with each cycle, the loss of the heterozygosity would be 50%. And for example, let me show you another example. Imagine that we have 1,000 heterozygous animals. And for example, in first um, F1 generation, if we have 1,000 heterozygous animals and we start after self-fertilization, we are going to lose 50% of the heterozygosity so the new number is going to be 500 of the heterozygous animals. In F2 generation, we are going to get 250. Again, we are going to lose 50% of the heterozygosity. In F3 generation, we are going to get 125 animals that is going to be heterozygous. In F4 generation, we are going to get, I'm rounding number 60, 63 animals that is going to be heterozygous. And in five generations, we are going to get 32 animals that is going to be heterozygous. So we can also add arrows here. So the loss of the heterozygosity is going to be 50% each time. Take a look. In F6 generation, we are going to get only 16 animals. That is going to be heterozygous. And in F7 generation, we are going to have only 
eight animals that is going to be heterozygous and in f8 generation we are going to get four animals that is going to be heterozygous and in f9 generation we are going to have two animals that is going to be heterozygous and in f10 generation we are going to have one animal that is going to be heterozygous and after 11 cycles in F11 generation we are going to get zero animals that is going to be heterozygous. So in this population all the animals that is heterozygous would be gone and we only would find animals that is going to be whether homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. It is called the loss of the heterozygosity when we inbreed animals. And for example, if we start, this is what I have shown you for just one locus. But imagine that we have many such loci. For example, here is a one chromosome. Here's another homologous chromosome. And if we start inbreeding, for example, in locus A on one chromosome inherited from the father side, we have dominant allele from the mother side recessive allele after 11 generations uh, we are going to have uh, only one variant whether it is going to be homozygous recessive all animals going to be homozygous recessive for this locus or going to be homozygous dominant please understand that not both just only uh, homozygous recessive or homozygous dominant. So this locus, we say, would be fixed. And imagine that, for example, another locus for the gene B, we have um, in these animals that we start in breeding only dominant allele. So no matter how many generations, this locus would be homozygous dominant. And let's say for another locus, C, we have two recessive alleles. Again, no matter how many generations, we only can get homozygous recessive for this locus. Yet another locus, we would have dominant allele D and recessive allele D. And again, we have two variants, whether it's going to be fixed as homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive, not both, whether this variant we will find or this variant. So all animals would be homozygous for all loci after, say, 11 generations. Even if we start with 1,000 animals, that is going to be heterozygous in many different loci, but we will eventually end up with animals that is going to be fixed with uh, homozygous recessive in this particular locus or homozygous dominant. Homozygous recessive uh, in this locus or homozygous dominant. So all loci would be fixed. It's not necessary that all loci would be homozygous dominant or all loci would be homozygous recessive. We still can have here homozygous recessive, homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, homozygous dominant. But we never would see heterozygosity at the same locus. I think that this is very important to understand how inbreeding works and I hope my uh, explanation was clear and uh, we can finish now uh, our problem. So now we even don't need all these uh, tables, we just can say uh, the final answer would be that half of this number, half of this frequency would go here and we, after say 10 generations or more, would have homozygous dominant frequency as 0 0.2 and half 
so would go here and another half would go here so another 16 percent and frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype would be 0 0.8 and this is going to be our answer today so in this particular example we would have only uh, homozygous dominant genotype after certain number of generations and homozygous recessive genotype and frequency would be 20 percent and 80 percent again uh, we would see such situation where uh, animals or plants only allowed self-pollination self-fertilization and we start with three genotypes but again if we have example and yes and zero percent for heterozygous uh, genotype in this particular locus but if uh, we have animals which we inbreed we of course wouldn't have any variation in the progeny all the progeny are going to be homozygous in all loci and going to be uniform for their genetic makeup and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day and see you in the next video goodbye